Yeah, that's right. I can show you the pictures right now. No, I want you to leave my family fucking alone. Keep hanging outside of there. Dude, I promise you, you're gonna get yours and you're gonna get I don't give a fuck. You can bring whoever the fuck you want. That's okay. You're gonna bring the fucking army. I don't give a fuck. This make you feel? Huh? You're filming my father and my fucking sister. How does this make oh, you is feel? Is that the one that put all those scratches on your arm? You want to see the scratches? You want, I got sure scratches. I can show you the pictures right now. No, I want you to leave my family fucking alone. Keep hanging outside of there. Hit the road, dude. I promise you, you're gonna get yours and you're gonna get. I don't give a fuck. You can bring whoever. Cynthia Ortiz. These are the Charles Perry Stalker Podcast. It's August 14, 2022, and uh, we do the disclaimer. Use allegedly. Nobody's been found guilty in a court of law just yet. Apply the but for legal standard. But for Mr. Perry stalking me, I wouldn't need to document it, would I? <clears throat> All he had to do is leave me the fuck alone. Then he wouldn't need to lie, right? Um, and apply the reasonable, prudent individual standard. And we assert all constitutional rights, including, but not limited to, equal protection of all laws, including Title 18 of the United States Code, 1512 and 1513, preventing and prohibiting witness tampering, victim tampering, coercion perjury we we have we assert that one uh and all applicable state laws against that and um coercion witness tampering victim tampering and uh grand larceny with intent to coerce interference with commerce and contracts with intent to coerce interfering with buying and selling of goods and services not, is not a crime unless it's used unless your intent is to use it to coerce a lie so we assert the equal protection. There's a lot of gender discrimination and misogyny in this situation and corruption. If the best you can do in your career in law enforcement is be the bitch of a sex weirdo, like, uh, you know, the guy on Clarice, Sheriff Rowland, he's my bitch. He feeds me Johns. I own him. Wow. It's better. My As sucky as it is for me right now to have to sleep in my car, I feel bad for you. It's worse for you. I can't imagine. That's the best you can do. That's the best you can be. That's the legacy you leave for your kids. Um, so when um, someone else has to come in to take care of a victim in your community, you've got a problem. I've lived in Oklahoma nine years. I left to get away from Mr. Perry. He is a psychotic, sociopathic, nutbag, sex weirdo, criminal. Um, I guess I made a comment because instead of moving on when rejected like everyone else does, Mr. Perry throws a little fit like a girl. He's more girl than I am. So I made a comment. I'm not, in these podcasts, there are times that I'm not speaking to my mindset. I'm not speaking to my set of beliefs and philosophies. I'm not speaking to politically correct anything. I'm having to right now save my life. So I'm speaking to the mindset of a serial killer. And I'm reading the book called Sexual Homicide by the man who set up the, the profiling at the FBI. It's called Sexual Homicide. He's reviewing why in the fuck anyone would do that. Why would anyone kill, like BTK, torture, bind, and then go jack off in another room and kill? Why would anyone do such a thing? So, um... He's basically studying the backgrounds, the social, biological, all the factors that would go into creating someone who grows up and does something so horrific we can't, normal people can't even fathom it. Can't fathom it. Mr. Perry, that's you right now and what you're doing to me. You have people very upset, worried about me, very disturbed, very mad at you guys. So we don't have any problem getting information you do. I quoted you all day. When this man says... I have pictures of you. I'm going to get you. Mr. Perry says that to me every day. They're using my uh, food delivery apps. I've said this over and over and over. It's not new. It's old. So I'm like, what are you trying to do here? Are you trying to stalk me more to prove you're not stalking? Every fucking delivery I've had, first of all, you can't know. I've signed up for three. Grubhub. I signed up for Grubhub, Uber Eats, and DoorDash. You can't know which one I'm working for on any given day without being a stalker, a hacker, and a peep and tom. You got something in my car, even? Wow. That's some pretty pathetic, desperate, sex weirdo problem you got there. And uh, peeping tom is a crime, it's a felony, and it's disgusting. It's a turnoff to women. Just so you know. That's not, you know, you're by yourself. 
for 13 years, you're a rejected fail. Too stupid to figure out how to get out, you know, move on. So when I'm making the comment, uh, do you feel pretty in that dress you wear? You got a matching outfit with your little doll? Um, I'm speaking to that mindset. And uh, I guess somebody commented on that and said, did, did she get that from reading that book? And the guy goes, no, she has seen that a long time before she read the book. And he goes, what do you think? And he goes, I think Charles Perry is every kind of sex weirdo there is. I think he's a child abused, that whack job. I, that's, I think she's dead on the money. You have done nothing but prove me out. Not, not a thing. For 13 years. There's not a real love life there. You're John Hinckley Jr. watching TV pretending. And everybody makes fun of you. He thinks that he, that's his girlfriend. That she won't have anything to do with him. That's not what a girlfriend does. Let me tell you something else, Mr. Perry. Everybody's a little sick and tired of you pretending like you care about me. You don't. You don't put somebody that you care about out on the street and starve them and try to make them say something or do something they don't want to do. It's not about that. You're full of shit. Nobody believes that anymore. You tried to use that as a con to sex traffic me. Like you want me to be the Ghislaine Maxwell for a couple of weeks until you murder me. And we all know that. You know why? Because you guys get recorded all the fucking time talking about killing me. We got to get her back to Texas, you said in March, so we can do more to her. So what that's going to involve is we got to get her kicked out of her home. We got to make sure she makes no money. We got to take her car away so she's digging out of a dumpster. Then she'll get so desperate she calls her ex-husband who lives in the Dallas area. And then she goes voluntarily. We don't have to kidnap her. We've heard you talking about it over and over and over. David Robertson, Josh Burson, Joe Chadwick, Calvin Geppetto, Muffin Man. I'm using Nick, your little nicknames, your little daycare nicknames. We've heard you talking about it, Charles Perry. Over and over and over and over. Matthew Powell began to, it looks like you'd kept him out of the loop on some things. It does look like there was a concerted effort to make her move out of her, out of her home, get her kicked to make her, make her homeless. So, like about a month or so ago, <clears throat> I go up to pay my hotel bill because now I've been kicked out of my house. They got you on interference with the contract. They recorded my landlord, Mr. Perry, asking how many people you've done that to. You know, I did still had a lease had you not interfered with my income. Grand larceny with intent to coerce. Interference with income and in, uh, commerce and contracts with intent to coerce. It's two parts. Not just contracts, it's also commerce. David, the buying and selling of anything. Interstate on some of it. Mr. Perry, no one cares what you think. Why do you think they would? You tried to talk to me like you just don't understand what people are saying. I don't care what you think. I did not ask. What did I ask you to do? Do you understand what people say? You need a response, sir. You want to be governor. Act like you understand what people say. You can't be governor if you can't respond appropriately to what people say to you like you understood it. I don't care what you think. Shut up. We're all sick of hearing it. We're all sick of hearing what Charles Perry thinks. That Charles Perry needs a lie. We got to force her back to Texas against her will. Over and over and over and over and over. So when I'm going to deliver and all day long, all I get is doorbell cameras and reflective glass doors. That's very unusual. When all I get is upside down orders I can't do anything with. That's very unusual. So what are you doing? Proving me out? She did say he hacked her apps and was using his buddies to call in to overcome an algorithm that chooses the driver to get her specifically so they could get her picture on a camera doorbell. Or she takes the picture to show the food's delivered and gets her, her uh, reflection in the glass door. Oh, we've said it. It's not just a day. We've said it over and over and over for months and months and months, Mr. Perry. So our shrink is like... He's giving it. That's what this guy says. I have pictures of you. I have pictures. I'm a stalker. I have pictures of you. I'm going to prove I'm in a stalker by all the pictures I have of you. <clears throat> so, I mean, you can't prove that you're not a drunk driver by driving drunk more, can you? Logic would tell you. So how are you going to prove you're not a stalker by getting a bunch of pictures of me? By hacking my food delivery apps. How are you gonna how are you gonna do that, sir? It's I mean uh, we don't, we've never seen anything this bizarre. We have a forensic accountant that said I should be making a hundred to hundred and fifty dollars a day 
with food delivery. Um, someone else pointed out when I go over, okay, here's what I do when I make a decision on what orders I take and which ones I decline. You don't have to take them. You don't have to take one that's not profitable. You have to consider your time. You have to consider your guess. I'm a business person, Mr. Perry. See, I'm not a stupid stripper. I only danced for six years. I'm the only one that collected the kind of evidence I've collected. No one else has what we have. While I'm in a strip club, that's what I did. Because you brought the crime to me. You made my life a crime scene. We got Pento offering $5,000 for sex with you, which was rejected. We got David Robertson saying, I, yeah, I gave you arsenic. Let your life fade away. I can't promise the stalking will end without death and destruction. Are you the hitman, David? See, uh, you texted that to me. Mickey James saying he, it might be worth uh, the speculation that we saw with Chandra Levy and um, uh, Gary Condit for him to go ahead and kill you. I signed an NDA and I've been watching you behind the scenes. Texted that to me. So who who do you, who is it you're fooling, sir? Who is it? Now, and now now people are like, if she, if he's made if he's done what he threatened to do and make it really, he actually made her homeless, he actually made her destitute, and now she changes her story. Well, I know she's lying. We're not stupid. We don't know who he thinks he's fooling. I got pictures of you. Yeah, you would. You're a stalker. Stalking's a felony. When you care about someone, you want them to be happy, even if it's not with you. You want them to have a fulfilled, happy career, life, friendships, family relationships. You want all things good for that person. So when you go around trying to act like you care, Mr. Perry, no one believes a word you say. Not anymore. Our shrink is like he gives his power away to you every time he makes you more credible. Because in order for someone to have leadership, they have to have trust. If no one trusts anything you say because all you do is lie, you, you're not leading anymore. You don't have any power anymore. No one believes a fucking thing you say. So what he's doing is we'll get the inside intel and give it to you. And then you put something out. Yeah, he's threatening to take my house away. Then he does, And he knows you have that. And he does it anyway. The McNamara email. Yeah, he's threatening a false arrest. And then you did it. You knew we had that. And then these charges get dismissed. I lose my home. The home I worked for, the home I earned, was a beautiful home. You took that from me and we are, and put me in the ghetto. That's not what you do when you love somebody. Now, I get in my apartment. I earned that. I fight for that. Because you tried to not let me get it. I got it. I worked. I danced. I did all the things that people do to earn a living. I worked for that money, David. Don't tell anybody else that you gave it to me. I did lap dances for your buddy Terry, sir. A lot of pole tricks. It's a very phys uh, physically demanding job. So I worked for it. And that was, you sent your canned food in after you ran off all the paying customers. So don't sit there and act like you gave me money. You're off your nut. It's, uh, you guys are something. You're not, you are completely delusionals. All of you. So, by the way, that makes it easier for us to get information. You don't know what the hell's going on. You can't tell fact from fiction. You make up your own bullshit. And you actually believe it. And everybody else is going, wow, I, okay. Do, 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 do. Sounds a little off. Yeah, it does. Sounds quite off, don't you think? <laughs> she said every time he, every time he uh, makes you more credible, because you're like, well, I did say beforehand, not after. That establishes Maine's Ray. They intended, they sat down and had a meeting and intended to cause a criminal injury against me and planned it. And we got it from the inside of their group and we put something out and he knew we had it and he did it anyway so that makes you a whole lot more credible there's too many I told you so I did say well I told you so but I said beforehand not after now you get more and more and more credible and it sucks as much as this sucks for you right now it's not gonna suck forever those we're gonna arrest these guys we, they got other victims they're working on Mr. Perry I'm not the only one you guys do this to a lot of women so it takes longer, sir. But you keep them pretty busy, you know, uh, going at me. So are they, when, when are they going to lower the hammer, David? What day is the hammer going down? That's it. Nightmare's over, finally. That's what everybody wants. Everybody's sick and tired of watch, watch, watching what you do to me. It's very disturbing for them. <coughs> we don't have problems getting information you do. You, can't, you don't know who the officers are. You don't know who has the actual recordings. You don't know how many jurisdictions have them. You don't know, do you? 
You even had six years to go in there and see if you couldn't get me to slip up. And not, but nobody did. Right? David comes in and, and has Margot ask me, is it, is it the FBI involved? And I'll look at her and I'll, well, my charges weren't federal. He goes running outside all happy. He thought he got something. I didn't answer the question, David. You said, is the FBI involved? Did, did I say yes or no? I didn't. What did I say? I said, my charges were not federal. So I didn't answer your question. That's the kind of doofuses I'm dealing with. Right there. That they actually think they're fooling people. And we're like, wow. <laughs> it's so easy, it's not even fair. Your attack on me is retaliation for my testimony for Michael. And because I'm a victim and I'm talking. And it's duly noted for the record. Okay? When you make me more and more credible by doing what an email says from October 2015, you do it in January 2016. I say Michael's drug before that was even on the docket. I say he's trying to force me out of my home. Out of my fucking home. And he's taking all my money, trying to make me destitute, hoping I'll lie. And you got people going with a drastic change in her life. How she, she tells a different story. She changes her story. Then we know for sure he made her lie. That's how most intelligent people think, Mr. Perry. You're delusional. Our shrink says you're not able to identify your legislative duties or what state you legislate in. Or the difference between a date and a felony. Or what it's... What is a consensual relationship? You're alone. None of you guys have a real love life, do you? Yep. When you're mean to people, they don't like you. When you do things that are illegal, you're doing things people don't like. That's why they made it illegal. So w when you see men in, in walking around that actually have a real love life, did it not occur to you? Maybe you ought to do what they do. You know what they do? Go work. Go be normal. Don't bother anybody. So... The comment that I made, are you feeling pretty in your little dress? Do you have a matching outfit with your little doll? I'm speaking to the mindset of a grandiose serial killer who thinks he's entitled to take and that being a man means you beat down women and children and abuse them and starve them and torture and torment them, deprive them of their basic rights and needs. That's who I'm speaking to. It just so happens that cross-dressing, voyeurism, sex with animals, um, child pornography are among the things on the list that we, the uh, Robert Kessler, Kessler, wrestler, who founded the FBI profiling department, um, said are common traits among a child abuse sex, uh, sex killer, serial killer like BTK. So, you have exhibited some of those traits, Mr. Perry. And so, the comment was, I think that she's not only right, I think Mr. Perry is every, every kind of sex weirdo there is. So, yeah, I'm completely in agreement with her. And she was saying that before she read that book. Okay, you're a sadist. Are you as well, David? Did you get abused as a child? Are you the same? Why do you do what you do? The, the study of uh, profiling, the study of criminal psychology, the study of criminology is the study of why in the fuck would anyone do that? Mr. Perry, we have heard more people. If we have what you say, we have our ear to the ground in a lot of places. And one thing that has been prevalent over the past two weeks of what you've done to me is our hearts are broken for her. She's in our prayers. Let her know she's in our prayers. So are you, so that you can wrap this up, and then she's free. And uh, why is he doing that to her? Why the fuck is he doing that to her? Why the fuck are they doing that to her? Why the hell are they doing that to her? What's wrong with TPD? Why aren't they helping y'all? Yeah, uh, great disappointment with y'all, TPD. I, we don't, I don't owe you an apology. I didn't come up here to get in, uh, any kind of uh, fuss with you. I, I really didn't. When there's crime going on in your jurisdiction, you need to do something about it because it might help wrap up a bigger case. We've asked you to help. We've asked you to do, we asked you to do the perjury. We asked you to do the obstruction of justice. You don't take somebody's um, 
police report on stalking and give it right to the offender so that they can then obstruct justice and destroy evidence. That's not what you do. So why did you do that to me? I'm cop family. If you want to be the bitch of a sex weirdo and that's your choice, that's your choice. You're a grown person. You can live with the consequences of it. In my head, I'd rather live in my car. And I am. That was my choice. My choice was, I'll live in my car. I'll barely eat, but I'm not going to fucking be the bitch of a sex weirdo. And lower myself to that and leave that as a legacy for my kids. Not going to do it. That's worse. It is absolutely a whole lot worse. And it is hot as fuck out there. I lost all my clothes. I have lost my tooth. I lost everything. So, I'm going to take a break for a minute. And then I'm going to come back and tell everybody what happened again. They've already heard it. I'll recap it. Alright, you see that? TPD connecting the dots. That's people that are in Charles. Please shut up. He's, he's, he's hacked my phones. He's cloned them. So he'll type in him like he thinks. I want to hear what he has to say. Nobody understands why he thinks that. What asked. What were you told to do? Get the fuck out of my phone. Get out of it. Hacking is a felony, not a date. You can't tell the difference, can you? You always act like you have no fucking idea what somebody just said. So, things just don't click for you, do they? Am I talking over your head? Okay, so, TPD, this has a bunch of cops in this video that tell you what you're supposed to do with stalking complaints, not what you did. So, forgive our frustration with you, but we have a right to be frustrated with you. The police department, the state and federal government, I'm, I'm sorry, well, yeah, the feds too. The state government and the local municipalities, um... The county municipality all of that is belongs to the people sir according to the constitution that our founding forefathers set this country up the people it's the government for the people by the people is it not you're just managing it you're doing a sucky job at it too so we uh get the government that we allow and when someone comes in and says uh well uh this is not going like it's supposed to go. There's some illegal shit going on here. Oh, well, that's just the way it is. Then they're asking for corruption. They're asking for that uh, stuff to be perpetuated until someone else comes in and goes, you know what? The only thing necessary for evil to prevail is when good men do nothing and shrug their shoulders and go, well, that's just the way it is. Oh, fuck no. That's not the way it is. That's not the way it is at all. You got guys, Benjamin Franklin, John Adams, <clears throat> George Washington, um, the framers of a constitution, John Hamilton, all those men who wrote the constitution were very, very wealthy men in a country called England. And they did not like the government that they had. They wanted to form their own. They fucking walked away from everything. Give me liberty or give me death. They walked away from all their wealth and all their power in England because these men were not weak. They were not broke. They were very wealthy, very powerful men who were very frustrated. And uh, they walked away from all of that and came here and lived in the sticks and started all over again. We have men and women who bled and died so that we could have freedom and the rights that we now have in what's called the Constitution, sir. You, Mr. Perry, are a Republican, or so you say. It's not a dictatorship, sir. Nobody owes you fuck. You just exhibit and display every characteristic of a serial killer. You do too as well, David, both of you. Three or more dead people from your hands makes you a serial killer as per the FBI's definition of a serial killer. Grandiose thinking, I'm owed something. My childhood sucked, so now I get to take a life or someone's money or abuse and deprive someone of their rights because I'm pathetic and I think, it, you know, it's uh, all about what happened to me as a kid and I didn't deal with it the right way. I got mommy issues and I didn't go to a shrink. I took a life. When you start killing cops, though, you, you, you're going to get some other cops on you. Uh, TPD might turn their head and go, well, we're not going to look at it. Well, no one cares. No one fucking cares. Because McNamara email didn't come from them. Where's the McNamara recording? 
Mike was drugged recording. Didn't come from them, did it? Do you think they're who you... I mean, I, t I, with all due respect, TPD, you're just not getting it done. Somebody else is. I'd be dead if it weren't for somebody else. I live in your town. I went to you. You dropped the ball. I like go-to guys who can make a touchdown. So you're not that. Now, when I say TPD or whatever... Okay, I never have in my entire life believed that part is the whole. Derek Chauvin was one guy. And the, all, all police everywhere took a hit for that. But that's bullshit. There's, there's, there's some good guys and there's some bad guys. In everything there is. It's, it's, it's in medical. It's in law enforcement. It's in... Uh, it's in, you know, you get bad waiters and good waiters, waitresses and waitresses, actors, whatever. Life is like that. You have lots of people, and some are good at what they do, and some suck at it. And some, you know, are sellouts. You know, they, they just, I don't know. So, when I say TPD, I don't mean the whole TPD. I don't think all TPD is meant. I think they got a couple of guys that are on the payroll. And that's what they chose to do. It's the best they can do in their career in law enforcement. Pension. I gotta have my pension. What about the victims? What about dead Lucky's family? Your family. You go home to your family. I'm sorry, but you don't need to be in law enforcement. It's time for you to get out of it. I'm gonna ask you very nicely. Whoever you are who's on Charles's payroll, who David calls up and goes, please get her car. If she's eating out of the dumpster, then maybe she'll go to Texas and subjugate. David, no one asked you what you think. I don't know you. I don't like you. I, mean, I, I barely know you. I didn't pick a fight with you. You're picking one with me. But you're picking one with the people that get me the information from you to me. I'm not doing that by myself. How the, uh, the Fabian puzzle? How could I... I mean... Where, 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 what planet are you on, sir? What planet are you fucking on? So, you, you, you know, who's, run, who, who's running TPD? Who's running it? Because we, it is illegal to stalk, it is illegal to hack, it is illegal to coerce, it is illegal to retaliate against a witness or a victim of crime. It is illegal to obstruct justice, it is illegal to batter someone, aggravated battery, ag aggravated assault, with a deadly weapon, you know, arsenic and shit. It's uh, illegal to attempt to kill someone, it's illegal to murder in the first degree. Did you kill Lucky? It looks like you did by the way you're acting. Looks like you did by the way you're acting. What are we supposed to do with that? He's a cop. What are other cops supposed to do with that? See. Do you not know how other cops think? Clearly you don't. So you want to call TPD and beg them to get my car away from me. Right? Is that what you're doing? You beg them to pull this guy over or somebody piss you off. Pull him over. Arrest him. Find something. Just find something. Is that what you do? You jump and they say how high? Are you the, sh you know, you're the, you're the guy on Clarice, that, that oh, Sheriff Rowan, he's my bitch. Uh, 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 I'm like, wow, okay, but that's not how, that's not real, that's not realistic, David. Really, reality is, TPD is run, TPD belongs to the people of Tulsa, the citizens of Tulsa. The state of Oklahoma, the governor's office, belongs to the people of Oklahoma, not a thug. Not a thug. So if you don't like what I'm doing, all you had to do is leave me alone. Because you guys are unable to say same and different. It's different when you do it to me, but it's the same thing every time you do it. All of a sudden, we find out what you're going to do before. Right? Somebody's getting that information from y'all in your inside little group of weirdos, criminal weirdos, and it gets to me. And I have it before. That's some power, David. That's what you're picking a fight with. So I'm sorry that TPD got itself in a situation where there's a couple of guys that go, when you when he calls up here, we got to do what he says. Do you? Do you? I mean, all you have to do is come talk to me. All you have to do is come talk to me. This situation, David and Charles, is very temporary. You're about to go to jail. When are they gonna? They're about to lower the hammer on you. It's not gonna be pretty. Do you like it when I quote you? You won't like what they do when they when you know. Who, who's going to bang on your door and take you to jail? When's that going to be? The more you give us... I mean, it's like you're trying to give us evidence. Trying to give us I told you so's. So, I, I mean, it's so easy, it's not even fair. TBD, when somebody gets you a stalking report, it goes here. 
it, it's prefer it's preferred if we don't all end up on the first 48 your you know your little TV show you knew there's a threat do something before the guy ends up dead or me I don't want to be on the first 48 I want you to do your job and make sure I don't get on the first 48 and protect victims of crime right we wanted you to help you chose not to you that's why nobody will tell you fuck they don't trust you so this is what our shrink says when you have a leadership position people have to trust you and every time you come out with something they're planning before they do it and then they do it anyway now you look more credible and more credible and well i told you so i did say they're using my dasher app to take pictures of me they're stalkers that's what stalkers do so uh i did say they were trying to make me homeless I did say they're interfering with commerce and contracts with intent to coerce. Yep, such a drastic change in her life. She changed her story now. We all know he made her lie. Two and three and four people have said. So, do you think everybody's as dumb as you, Charles? Dave? They're not. They're just not. Does it not bother you that you look bad right now? That you look everybody hates you for what you're doing to me and Mike? Does that not bother you? It should. It should actually bother you. That you've disturbed everybody. Okay? So, when we bring you a police report, TPD, and you give it right to the offender, and then they, 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 they I don't get to collect my blood to see, it, is it arsenic? There's two of us now. There's me and Mike. What exactly was in our body that made us sick? How much of it was there? How did it get there? Who put it there? I'm not going to drink arsenic voluntarily. Somebody gave it to me. He's not going to take opioids voluntarily. Somebody gave that to him. There was nothing in his bags, nothing in Lucky's bag. Where'd he come from? Where'd it come from? That's what police are supposed to do, ask those kind of questions. You know that. I've seen you do it on the first 48. I don't want to go on that show. It's shooting fish in a barrel if I end up on that show. Oh, she's dead. Oh, guess what? Charles Perry and David Robertson did it. Yay, yay. We're here. Look how good we are at this. Yeah. Uh, no. 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 Sorry, that one's already solved. I end up dead. Everybody knows exactly who, who did that. Okay, so... So you can't, you can't put me on the TV show. Um, this is use of technology. You hacked my phone. That's what they're talking about. It's very common these days. Okay, TBD. And if somebody obstructs justice and destroys your evidence, that's acts of consciousness of guilt, isn't it? Actual consciousness of guilt. They tried to kill me, and then they tried to cover it up. The evidence of covering... Somebody covering something up is evidence in and of itself. Right, TP? They all know that. They, I'm t I, I mean, it's not like they don't fucking know. They do. Talk to me! Please, I can't live here anymore because you stalked me. That's no, why no, I mean. no. Just Leave to me alone. Call, I will. You talk to me for two minutes, no, I'll leave you alone. No, damn it! I don't want to ever talk to you. I don't ever want to hear your voice, do you? What, please, what God happened? bless you, but what please happened? leave me alone. Just... Please leave me alone! Please, huh? stop following me! You won't call the cops stop! I don't! Stop stalking me! Please, hey. I can't live here anymore because you stalked me! That's no, why no, I mean. no, no. Just talk leave to me. me alone! Call. I will! You talk to me for two minutes, no. I'll leave you alone! No! minutes! I don't want to ever talk to you! What I don't ever want to hear your voice, do you? What, please, what God happened? bless you, but what please happened? leave me alone! Just... Please, leave me alone! Leave, sure leave me alone! All you want. I don't want free for this! Please, yeah, leave me alone! Hey, man. Leave women the fuck alone. When they're in public, when they're doing anything, you don't have the right to their attention. You don't have the right to step into their personal space. You don't have the right to them. Especially if they're making it very clear they don't want to be talked to. But even when they're not, unless a woman is giving you enthusiastic and continuous body language and signs that she wants to talk to your ugly dumbass, then leave her the fuck alone. Find a date a different way. Okay, it's not clever, it's not cool, it's not cute, it's garbage, it's absolute garbage behavior, and you're a garbage person if you do it. I don't care if it's in public, it doesn't fucking matter. You don't have the right to her, and you need to leave her alone. And this is bacon. Oh, that's okay, I don't care. Leave me alone. All you want. I don't want proof of this. Jeff has been raping you since Leave me alone. alone. Please. Just, just talk to me for two minutes. First, let me say that I'm happy that the lady in this video is okay. Second, let me break down what rape culture is. Rape culture is the fact that that man felt that he was entitled to some of this woman's time just because he said, let me talk to you for two minutes.
Doesn't matter if it's two minutes, five minutes, 20 minutes. If she said no, no means no. Rape culture is the comments that she has on her video about how she should have just spoke to him or dressed differently. Rape culture is me taking the heat for calling out other men for their terrible behavior. Rape culture is trying to explain stuff as, oh, it's just locker room talk. No, it's not locker room talk. Talk. You should talk the same way wherever you are. We all know that rape is not about sex, it's about power. So for you to force yourself on somebody, even if you're just talking to them, is disgusting, dude. It's disgusting to have to deal with a stalker. So, Mr. Perry, Josh Burson, Joe Chadwick, Matthew Powell, David Robertson, Charles Perry, Calvin, <coughs> Geppetto. How did I get that name, Geppetto? Here's the thing. What I told you when you started first offering me a buy lie money, I'll give you whatever you want if you lie for me. And I was like, no, you won't. You'll give me what you want. Because what you and I want are not the same thing. What I want is for you to give back every penny you took from me. Get Michael Neely home to his family. Get sensations full of paying customers because you ran all their customers off. And I want you to get the fuck out. And I never want to hear from you again. Had you done what I said, two things would have happened, guys. One is, if you're going to frame somebody for the murder of Chief Miller, whose head came off his body, he was knocked back and forth so hard that his, his, he died of internal decapitation. His head came off his body. What if you had to die like that? What if, for the death penalty, you had to die the way you made your victim die? What would that look like? Would we have less murder? I don't know. It's, I mean, you get lethal injection and people say, oh, that's cruel. It's a violation of the Eighth Amendment. It's cruel and unusual punishment. Is it, though? I mean, compared to if we made guys die the way they made their victims die. I mean, when you compare the two, can we really say that that is, um, that is, uh, you know, I don't know if that's cruel and unusual. It wasn't cruel and unusual when you did it to your victim. Right? When you beat somebody, a cop, that badly. If you like framing people, Lucky had just done a meth bust. Why didn't you use one of those guys? And leave Mike alone. And then there would be no link to the vandalism and no link to you. Because I filed a vandalism complaint against whoever got in my trunk. Likely stalking. Just like the connecting the dots, TPD, watch the video. That's cops on there. They know what they're fucking doing. You don't give the police report right to the offender and let him obstruct justice and destroy the evidence. That's not what you do. That's what you did to me. And I lost my home. Because you did. And now we got another cop. We got a cop dead. Another death. A lot of similarities. In what happened to Mike and what happened to me. We're going to try to kill these people. And if they don't die, we'll just throw them in jail. And Dave Robertson is used to just calling his boy up at uh, TPD. I want this guy pulled over. I want this guy put in jail. Find something. Aren't you? We know that. Just duly noted for the record. That's what you do. Do you threaten them too? Do you threaten to do to them what you did to Lucky and Mike and me? Huh? It's duly noted for the record. So we don't know who you think you're fooling. This. Uh, oh, God. Now I lost my train of thought again. Um, so when you, when you, if you had done that, if you had done what I said... And gotten Mike Neely home, and there would be no link to you, the vandalism, or anything. Me, nothing. And if I'm doing good, there's no evidence of coercion. Then, you know, the, the reporters pointed out, we, we, we would say she's wrong, if not a little crazy, if she continued to assert that they killed Chief Miller, even if they really did. We would think she that they didn't. They, got, they helped Mike get home. They backed the blue. They don't want suspicion on them. She's doing good. There's no money problems for her. There's no coercion, evidence of coercion. They're not trying to make her lie. They're not punishing her. They're not retaliating or anything. But that's not what they did. Instead, what they did is there's now four cases which she was kept out of the courtroom. Material concealment. I'm sorry, concealment of a material fact that could change the outcome. Was likely to change the outcome. Had the jury heard what I had to say. And you knew that. If my three civil suits... Mr. Perry, everyone laughs at you when you go around going, I won, I won, I won. No, no, that's not. You didn't have an opponent, sir. Everybody thinks that's hysterical that you think that. You have to have an opponent to win. You played yourself at Candyland. You beat you. 
No one saw my evidence. What's the harm in letting me in court to show evidence I don't have? You gave me a whole lot of credibility, more than you know, sir, in the minds of people who matter. There's people, but then there's people who matter. A whole lot of, if I'm quoting you, we, you better wake up as to who matters and who doesn't. Whose opinions are relevant and whose are not. Okay? Because there is a difference. When I show evidence, when I put my witnesses on the stand, and when I put you on the stand, it's a whole different ball game than when you go in there secretly, ex parte, and tell the judge what to write on the order. All right? You didn't have an opponent. You didn't win shit. You made a fool of yourself. You gave me a lot of credibility. Every time you carry out a threat that I put out beforehand, you give me a lot of credibility, and our shrink said he gives his power over to you too. Now people don't believe him. Now nobody trusts him. He's lied too many times. Too many times you said it before. Too many times he did it anyway. Too many times you proved out, or he proved you out. And he looks like a liar and a cheat. And a con artist. And so nobody trusts him. You can't lead if nobody trusts you. That's just the way it is. When the man said, and I, I put it out there, I'm going to look over Mike's case. I want to find out what happened. I'm going to read the docket. And he said, watch, she'll find every mistake they made. That's where his mind went to first, isn't it? Right then, his mind went right there because he knew me. He knew my, my way I think, the way I do things. My reputation is such that he knew when I said, I'm going to read it. He didn't go, oh, she's stupid. She won't catch it. She won't notice it. Ah, oh, she's a dumbass. She won't. He said, watch, she'll find every mistake they made. Because that's where people's minds go regarding me, sir. You're not fooling anybody. Everybody laughs at you because you're delusional. He walks around telling everybody that's his girlfriend. She, oh, wow, she won't have a fucking thing to do with him. She won't have a fucking thing to do with him. Won't see him, won't talk to him. Move twice to get away from him. He can't tell the difference between a felony and a date. And none of y'all have a real love life. You don't have a real love life where a woman wants you. A woman's trying to see you. Charles, you're getting kicked off of me. I hate your guts. Everyone does. We don't have problems getting information. You do. You're making everybody feel very uncomfortable and very disturbed by what you're doing to me and Mike. So we can get information, David. Like what's your little, your little stunt you tried to pull at Jack in the Box last night? Yep, I bailed. This morning, how much cash does she have? How much gas does she have? Let's get to see if we can get her to research looking around in that trunk. I did go to research. They did look in my trunk. There's nothing in it. I don't have anything. You guys took everything I own. Yeah, and I guess you want you, you weren't you talking to somebody? Can't you just do a welfare check? She's parked over at such a well, first of all, how do you know where she's parked? The first first thing you have to do is tell me how you know legally where she's parked. Second of all, you can't tell she's doing anything that looks like she's waiting on somebody and maybe fell asleep while she was waiting. Because y'all took all her shit. When you tell, when you, the way you can tell somebody's living out of their car, all their shit's in their car. But she has nothing in her car because you took everything from her. Yeah. Okay, so we heard that, that conversation too, David. Charles. Okay, here's the thing. So, what happened, I'll recap it real quick, is uh, about a little over a month ago, I went to the desk to, sit, to pay the hotel lady. And she goes, you don't have to pay today, I rolled you a week. So you have a whole week to pay. Okay, a whole week is seven days, is it not? To me, it's, it's to everybody, is a week seven days? Okay, they come out in at about three days and bang on the door wanting payment. I said, okay, I'll be right back. I went and I called my ex-husband. He comes up to Tulsa, goes in, pays the week and the, and the, and the month. So uh, when that month is up, they come bang, banging on the door threatening to call the cops. You leave right now. You can't take your stuff. You stole my property. They made me leave with nothing but what I was wearing. I managed to grab a few things real quick, but, uh, and then I guess they told somebody, Cunt Wheeler or somebody, she barricaded herself in and, and he watched the video as they went right in. She went barricaded in. I did barricade myself in at night when I went to sleep because there's some, you know, people, I, you know, you never know. So I had a way to barricade the door that, so that people couldn't get in at night when I'm sleeping. It wasn't barricaded when they came through, when they came around, they walked right in. It's on video. They got surveillance cameras all over that place. So um, when you lie, there's a way you you know you lie, you lose credibility. You give me power. 
Now I'm credible and you're not. Now people believe me because time and time again, I've proven out and proven out and proven out and proven out. Michael's drugged before anybody else said it. Michael's drugged. McNamara email. Actually, it's not an email. David is recording. We didn't get that from Tulsa police. We didn't get the Michael's drugged recordings from Tulsa police. We didn't get the ringtone recordings from Tulsa police. We didn't get the, uh, what else? I mean, there's so many. There's thousands, 70,000 now. So you, there's there's leaks, there's wiretap orders, there's other things that they can do that they have a court order for. When you invade my privacy, they invade yours. We have a court order and you don't. It's been that way for years. And you guys act like you have no idea what I just said. Like, you, you just don't even know what I just said. Charles, you and I are not a couple. I mean, you're not my boyfriend. You're a stalker. I rejected you. I don't like you. I'm, there's no fucking way I'd go out with a man who treats women the way you do. There's no fucking way. I'll beat the hell out of you if you get anywhere near me. I'm not going to go out with you. you. You make all my skin crawl. You're the creepiest, most fucked up piece of shit I've ever met in my life. You're a job. Get your head out of your ass. You look ridiculous. People make fun of you. For nine years, I've been in Oklahoma. Nine years. I moved twice to get away from you. I've sued you three times. And 11, of those, 11 times in those lawsuits, asked for a judge to make you leave me alone. The bond conditions were the closest I ever got to a judge saying you leave her alone. You agreed to leave me alone, and I agreed to stay quiet. But the second I got to back to Oklahoma, you went right back at it and harassed and harassed and provoked and provoked and harassed and harassed. Now we have a judge recorded saying, leave her alone. I got to rule out entrapment and provocation because it looks to me like what's happening. You're claiming you're being harassed. That's bullshit. You're doing things to her to cause catastrophic loss, and she's talking about it, and you don't like that. Right? You're full of crap. By the way, Justice uh, Scalia died in West Texas while you were planning that. We were all there in West Texas. It was all over the jail that you were going to do that. You had already expressed intent to commit a crime against me and to go into court and perjure yourself again. And you did it, didn't you? How many times? That was Kirkendall. You're doing it in Parker's court now? See, every I have help. Law enforcement help you can't get to. You sure you want to piss them off? Continuing this, you know, tirade of my finances and my getting in my wallet. A hundred to a hundred and fifty dollars a day. Times every day. I should have made that much and didn't because I had to call it quits early. Or I couldn't work at all. My Verizon bills do. My guys are like, we're all tired. I got to call guys in for you. We got other victims. We're trying to close, close those up. And they're still doing this shit to you all the time. So I got to call guys in. You're tired. They're tired. They're going to fuck with you. All, you're not going to make any money. He's going to jam up your app all night. They were, we were just heard him talking about it. So just chill. Let him interfere with that contract and I'll charge him for it. So there's one you're going to get. Okay? They have a, you know, you should, if, if we got a forensic accountant, you need one too, don't you think? Now, when I tell you to leave me the fuck alone and you don't, when I'm telling you, I don't feel anything for you but deep disgust. I've said that for years. I have done everything I can possibly do, Mr. Perry, so that you don't think there's any chance of a date. I can't stand you. There's nothing there. You disgust me. You disgust everybody. You can't get information. We can. Are you not understanding what people say to you? Are you that, are you that stupid? You got some kind of problem? Because you, you never act, you always act like you just didn't understand. You just didn't click. You have no fucking idea what they just said. You got Huntington's disease or what's wrong with you that makes you do that? See, so we're all tired of it. I've asked you and asked you and asked you to cease and desist. Cease and desist. I don't want to go to Texas, and I told you no. My ex-husband called me again the other day, starting to try to talk me into going to Texas. I hung up on him. That, you know, you're, I'm going to go. I told you so. I'm going to go into court and go the wit, after the witness testifies. So here's what he does to women and kids. That's what opened the case to begin with. Here's what... Uh, you know, the shrinks say, yep, that's, I mean, yeah, he did, he did it to me. I slept in my car. I had to sleep in my fucking car. And then they were trying to take that away, too. Let's get her eaten out of a dumpster and then she'll go. Oh, my God. Wow. We heard you say that. So, duly noted for the record, we heard you say that. Yeah, I said no. Now you're just pissing everybody off. It's disturbing what you're doing to me. It's upsetting people, and so we get more. And the more, the longer I'm broke, because you're making me broke. The longer Mike's in jail, because you committed fraud upon the court, again, for the fourth time. 
the more you try to coerce me and retaliate because I testified against you in a murder trial of a cop and won't be your bitch, uh, the, more, the, the more we get. It's been that way for a long time. Are you not able to understand what people say to you? Because it seems like you don't know. It's really fucking embarrassing. So, hang on. Do you see this here? There's a YouTube video podcast where all the, all the podcasts are. These, this right here, <coughs> is where you can see all the information on my false arrest. All you did is make legends. All you have to do is watch that video. The other place is right here. All the texts I just referred to. Podcasts going over Mike Neely's case. All of that is on this page right here. Justice Scalia. The suspicion around his death not being a death. Maybe it was murder. Because he is a First Amendment guy. And uh, you got some high power after you, David. They're not from Tulsa. So, I mean, we don't have anything against Tulsa. Except they're just not doing the right thing here. And um, we don't like it when life... There's a thing called, uh, in fact, my ex-husband, if he asked me again to move to Texas, he might have some problems with the law. Because I'm, scr I'm screaming at him, it's too dangerous for me there. It's too, shut, don't ask me again, it's too dangerous for me there. And he's yelling at me, you need to come here, you need to come here. And I'm like, oh my god, we have talked about this. I'm the mother of your, your child. My guys are like, he's, it's not that you're his ex-wife, it's that you're the mother of his son. And for him not to take care of uh, this, this situation is outrageous. We're, we're all, we're all, you know, I got kids that are grown. I'm remarried. I still help my ex-wife, who's not really my ex-wife, but she's the mother of my children. She did a great job raising my kids. And guess what? She didn't go through half of what you went through. She didn't go through any of what you went through while you're trying to raise, raise your kid by yourself. You had a, a, a serial killer after you that whole time. You and your kid both. And for your ex-husband to act like that is it's insane. It's nuts. Why would he do that? It's called... Uh, indifference, depraved indifference to human life. It's a murder charge in most states. You just don't give a shit. Somebody ends up dead, you just don't give a fuck. You know they're in danger. You're doing everything that he's going to take me right to the danger. Really? I just don't care. I, you know, I don't care. They told me to ask you. I, I, you know, come on with that. I think y'all have influenced him enough, don't you? So, um, there's this. Right here. That anybody can look at any any time. There's Dr. Russell. I think he just wants to hurt you. I think he's a sex sadist who just wants to hurt people. And that's why you're told on, sir. And we can get information you can't. You're causing other people to be very disturbed and upset by what you're doing to me and Mike. And you act like you have no idea what I just said. You never respond like you understood. Like it just didn't click. Like I'm talking over your head. So... And then there's this, uh, $5,000 for a night of sex. Be creeped out with him. Be, be, be creeped out by him. And I'm like, it's, he's like, you could ruin him politically. And I'm like, uh, I don't give a fuck about his politics. I want him to leave me alone. I want that fuck to leave me alone. When a woman says leave me alone, it should only take one time, sir. Here's another thing. I'm very smart. You say it once. I have zero tolerance for people. I got to repeat myself over and over and over and over and over. Okay, none. On this page here is my deposition with uh, uh, Officer Neely's um, thing, his attorney. His attorney, by the way, was concerned. How did she know um, what my legal argument was going to be before I made it? Because we heard y'all talking about it. She texted me and said, don't, don't do that. It's not possible. Well, he's uh, drugged and unconscious. He can't with his ass cause the internal decapitation, strangulation, and blunt trauma to the head. <clears throat> the fight was between Mikey and the offender, sir. Do you understand? Alright, so here's that. Um, and anybody can look at it at any time. Coercion is a crime, not a date. It's a felony, actually. Can you not tell the difference? Kent, he's not able to identify his legislative duties, or what state he legislates in, or what constitutes a, a mutual consensual relationship, or a real date, or the difference between a felony and a date. He has no real love life. And he goes around telling everybody he does. Wow, what a whack job. What a delusional fucking whack job. So, um, this is domestic violence. Economic abuse is part of domestic violence, sir. But it's also worse than that. 
It's also, it's also witness and victim tampering. And you've got a lot of perjury you're going to have to answer to. So when you guys do something, keep in mind that when you talk in your little meetings of how can we uh, do this to Cynthia or do that, you know, subjugate, whatever your dark, you know, from century way back when, we still think women should be subjugated. I, I would love to see the look on Sotomayor's face, Kagan's face, Justice's and, and Barrett's when you tell them women sh should subjugate to men. That ought to be hysterical. I would love to see that. So uh, here's that. And um, so you're basically just doing what I've been saying you were threatening to do for a long time. It's duly noted for the record. Now, you can live with your choices, Mr. Perry, can't you? Um, we're, we're, we're sick of this. Everybody's sick of it. We don't have problems getting information. Look at your results. For 13 years, you have not gotten one date. There won't be a date. And I think everybody's way past the time they didn't believe that's what this is really about. So, um, you're, they just, I think you're, you, you're not getting it that everybody pretty, pretty sure you're just full of shit. You're just fucking pull, you're a sex sadist and you get off on hurting people. You got two shrinks that said the same thing. So you're, you're confirming out, you're proving out a witness. You're proving out two shrinks and a whole lot of, uh, recordings of you. David, you too. Well, all of you. Is that what you want? Is that your goal? You know, our, our goal was collecting more evidence than anybody ever has. Put these guys away. That way they can't hurt people anymore. We go to the victims and say, you're safe now. I'm like Batman some, in some, in, in some, in some, twice now. So one day I'm in Quick Trip. And, um, and I go in and I ask the guy, I'm like, he did it for me the night before. I don't know what the hell happened to him. But you can say maybe divine in intervention. I don't know. But I, I'm like, I need, um, you know, to pay for this. And I need some cash back. He forgets the cash back. So I'm like all pissed off at him. He's like, my bad. I'm like, mm, you know, whatever. So I go out to my car and I'm getting ready to leave. Okay. And, um, and then I'm like, you know, Ned, no, I'll just go in and get a banana. And then I'll get my banana and get the cash. I really would like to have the cash. So I walk back in uh, after I decide not to go ahead and leave. Walk back in. And when I come out after getting all that straightened out, uh, there's TPD talking to this dude. The, the TPD officer was uh, quite a bit smaller than the guy, and there was there was two officers, both of them was way smaller than this man. He was huge, and he's like, they're just trying to talk to him. They weren't mean. They weren't rude. They weren't asshole. They weren't mean. They weren't rude. They weren't asshole. They were fine. He's just trying to talk to him, and he was being uh, uncooperative and trying to get away from them. I'm starting to back up my car, and uh, he's starting to what, run out to the parking lot. And, uh, where there's people, like, he could take a hostage, he could, I mean, you don't know what he'll do. Some of these people, you don't know what the fuck they're gonna do. Officers trying to block him, again, remember, he's a big, huge guy, and a lot bigger than all, both officers. So, I'm um, like, oh my god, it's gonna be fucking taser here. So, I pull my car back, and I stop, and I'm kind of watching for a second, and I'm like, I think, remember I deal a lot in the subconscious mind. Some, sometimes when somebody sees something bigger, like a car, in the way... It will deter them subconsciously. They may not even realize that that's what happened. But So I'm like, I'm, let me back up just a little bit more to kind of keep him from going out in the parking lot. And um, so I go in behind the officer. It looks like I'm just backing out of my parking place, right? I back up a little bit more, and he went the other way. So I left. I don't know what, I, I don't know what, what, like, what happened after I left, but, you know, you always, I always, I always believe in things happen for a reason, like divine intervention, like, what it would what if I hadn't come out what if I had just left and not gone back in and then come back out when when uh that was all happening and then back to my car up uh, like I did just like real smooth he didn't know what I was doing he just thought I was leaving and then I just you know he could have gone out to the parking lot he could have you know charged the officer got out in the parking lot got a host I mean you know we don't know they we won't know till we're all in heaven if you even make it there mr. Perry <clears throat> or you're Satanist, right? You don't really actually believe heaven exists. or I, I mean, I don't know what the fuck y'all believe. Um, nothing I believe, that's for sure. So, um, then I didn't, I mean, I just left. I didn't say another thing. I didn't do it, you know. And then the other the other day I was like at this uh, place. This All of a sudden this couple are kind of arguing and then it starts escalating. And then he's like has his fist back. He's about to pop her, and I honk my horn, so that distracted him, and other people come running over, and then I bailed. It's like I just kind of swoop in and kind of just do my thing and then swoop right back out again. I mean, that's just kind of, uh, put you're put in certain places for a reason. So, 
when you're put in a situation that you could help to save a life or a victim or be able to tell a victim you're safe now and you just don't, you also refuse the blessing that God has planned for you for whatever it is that ha that, that, that that was about. And, you know, and I keep saying a man's kindness brings blessings and his cruelty will be his downfall. And I've not been seen that be true more than here. Mr. Perry, the more cruel you get to me, Mr. Robertson, the more cruel you get to me, the more you get caught. And that's never happened to y'all before. All of a sudden, it's different this time. It's different when you do it to me, but it's the same every time you do it. So you want to take pictures of me, um, you know, have your buddy call in and order some kind of uh, food delivery and overcome an algorithm that chooses the drivers and get me specifically to take a picture. Then you're just Neil. That's all you are. I'm stalking you know I have pictures of you. Huh? You're filming my father and my fucking sister. How does this make oh, you is feel? Is that the one that put all those scratches on your arm? You want to see the scratches? Pictures? You want, I got sure, scratches. I can show you the pictures right now. No, I want you to leave my family fucking alone. Keep hanging oh, outside of there. Hit the road. Dude, I promise you, you're gonna get yours and you're gonna I don't give a fuck. You can bring whoever the fuck you want. That's okay. You're gonna bring the whole fucking army. I hear that too. I'm gonna get you. All right, is that a threat? Duly noted. Another one. I'll give a fuck. Make you feel? Huh? You're filming my father and my fucking sister. How does this make oh, you is feel? Is that the one that put all those scratches on your arm? You want to see the scratches? You want, I got sure. scratches. I can show you the pictures right now. No, I want you to leave my family fucking alone. Keep hanging oh, outside of there. Hit the road, dude. I promise you, you're gonna get yours. And you're gonna I don't get go. All right, so my ex-husband, by the way, it was a flag off, Mr. Perry. Looks like a concerted effort to make her homeless, because her ex-husband offered to pay for a week. Then all of a sudden he changes that. I'm just going to pay for a night and you can live it on the street. Or come to Texas where you might be murdered. Those are my options. So, if he offered to pay a week, I suggest you fix that. Okay? You don't have to. But since you ruined it, since you fucked something up, broke it, fix it. Alright? And, um, you had no right to call him and tell him to coerce me. Depraved indifference to human life is a crime, sir. You just love to try to make other people help you with your crime and everybody's going such a drastic change in her life if she changes her story now we all know she's lying he made her he forced her to it so you can't believe it what you believe is the first thing somebody says before somebody had time to tamper and coerce and put unbearable stress on that person to make them feel they had to change their story their court testimony so you are in a lot of trouble, and you act like you don't know that. And as many times as we quote you all, we don't know why the fuck you don't know that. Everyone else knows that. Mental slows. I don't know. In general, everybody sees you like this. That's okay. I don't care. Leave me alone. You want. I don't want proof of this. Please That's leave me alone. Hey, man. Leave women the fuck alone. When they're in public, when they're doing anything don't have the right to their attention you don't have the right to step into their personal space you don't have the right to them especially if they're making it very clear they don't want to be talked to but even when they're not unless a woman is giving you enthusiastic and continuous body language and signs that she wants to talk to your ugly dumbass, then leave her the fuck alone find a date a different way okay it's not clever it's not cool, it's not cute. It's garbage, it's absolute garbage behavior. And you're a garbage person if you do it. I don't care if it's in public, it doesn't fucking matter. You don't have the right to her, you need to leave her alone. And this is bacon.